Today we're going to take a look at the Spider-Man Miles Morales Omnibus. It has an 856 page count and a cover price of $100. Stay tuned after the video to see how you can win a 110 scale Colossus statue from Iron Studios. So this omnibus here will be getting a reprint later in the year. There has been some confusion over a name change as a, this is Spider-Man Miles Morales Omnibus, but now it'll be called the Miles Morales Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2. Same thing with the, uh, the first book, Miles Morales The Ultimate Spider-Man Omnibus will now just be called the Miles Morales Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. Figured I'd just clear that up quick because I've heard a lot of people asking questions about it. So uh, the dust jacket, you get great artwork from Sarah Pacelli. And uh, you know, on the inside of the dust jacket, a little bit of backstory and uh, the creators on the right hand side as always, you get this fantastic wraparound cover with just uh, different panels from uh, inside this book here, which I love. So spreading it out, just take a look at the gloriousness of the wraparound cover. Gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. So this, uh, this book takes place right after Secret Wars where... Uh, infamously, Miles Morales saves the multiverse with a cheeseburger, a spoiled cheeseburger. Um, love it or hate it, that's what happened. <laughs> you get the uh, issues collected here. This is, of course, from Brian Michael Bendis. And man, it's just a great run. It's a, it's a wholesome run, if you ask me. Uh, there's some great action scenes in it, great uh, like relationships with uh, Genki and uh, Miles' family, some uh, secrets revealed, some people come back from the dead or supposed dead. Uh, you get some great character pop-ups throughout here. It's just a real fantastic read, man. I uh, definitely would recommend to, uh, you know, anybody who uh, is getting into the Miles stuff. Of course, I would say to uh, read the first Miles Morales Omnibus first. So getting into what this book collects, it has Spider-Man 2016, 1 through 21, and 234 through 240, Spider-Gwen 16 through 18, Spider-Man 2, 1 through 5, and Generations, Miles Morales Spider-Man, and Peter Parker Spider-Man. So in this book here, you have Miles Morales. He's now living in the uh, 616 universe as he previously was in the Ultimate Universe. And a couple of the characters and whatnot from uh, that universe that he was in before come into this book. So he's got like his family and Genki and uh, a couple other characters throughout the book that come from the Ultimate Universe and are now in the 616. This is a cool part here where a YouTuber who does vlogs about Spider-Man, Danica, she... Uh, sees a video where his mask has been ripped and you can see that he has brown uh, skin tone. So, you know, she's real excited that like a person of color is actually Spider-Man now. And uh, Miles doesn't really like understand the importance of that at the time. But I think throughout the story, it definitely, it, it gets to him a bit. And he realizes that, you know, it is pretty important that, you know, a person of color is, is now Spider-Man. So there's a lot of like cool underlying things like that throughout this book. There's a, you know, a lot to do with his family. There's a, uh, you know, his father is secretly working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and, you know, his mother doesn't know that uh, he's Spider-Man. You also get some great stuff with Hammerhead and Black Cat throughout this book. That's a great looking cover there with uh, Hammerhead and Black Cat. So in this book too, um, Genki and Miles get a new roommate, uh, Fabio, who is... Uh, used to be an x-men uh his name is gold balls so he just has I, i've never heard of him before he just has these gold balls he just shoots out everywhere which is pretty hilarious so uh you know there's some some stuff going on with him throughout this book uh i do love the artwork in the uh spider-man stuff hammerhead there with his giant ass head uh, the artwork is really good i will say that the uh the spider gwen stuff that happens throughout this book i'm not crazy about i'm not like a huge fan i think the artwork isn't very good and uh i don't know reading this just made me realize that uh it's gonna be probably tough getting through that spider gwen omnibus but we'll see how it goes when it when the time comes but uh so they, they get the new roommate um miles's grandmother like finds out that he uh you know has been uh, failing school and whatnot and uh she ends up hiring jessica jones actually as a private investigator to uh you know kind of spy on him and then there's this whole arc here in the story where uh, there's an inhuman that has these visions of things that are going to happen like in this the hulk uh, i believe he's does he kill all the avengers or something like that i don't remember what it was exactly but so there's this inhuman who has these visions and they all think it's you know going to come to fruition there's luke cage and jessica jones there rolling up on miles uh so that uh that whole arc with like the inhuman with these visions is it's pretty good i guess i don't know 
it's a uh, it's short i honestly like more of the family interactions between miles and whatnot throughout it like him and his grandma trying to spy on him his dad uh doing things with shield his mom still not knowing that uh you know that he is actually spider-man um but your boy ganky there meets up with that girl and he's like tempted to give her information about miles morales and uh give him uh give her the true identity of him uh the inhuman has another vision where miles kills captain america so there's some craziness that goes on with that but uh i won't get into too much of that i don't want to spoil everything but uh you know it's a it's a decent book man i do love the family interactions the artwork throughout it is really cool the relationship with uh miles and his father is also great with uh you know them trying to keep it a secret from uh miles's mother so eventually in this book uh miles's dad goes missing and that's kind of where the spider gwen stuff comes into fruition throughout this book is uh he's gone and they have to try and figure out you know kind of where he is which uh so they go into other dimensions they're jumping different dimensions and whatnot throughout this which is that part is kind of cool but this is as i say here the the artwork i'm not like crazy about it matt murdoch showing up uh it's a little too cartoony anime-ish for me i guess i don't know it's a uh, not my favorite for sure you can also tell a huge difference in the writing style when it crosses over from uh, the stuff with brian michael bendis to uh jason latour who writes the uh, spider gwen issues that are in this it's just uh i don't know i feel like the writing in the spider gwen issues are a little clunky got some great like marvel zombie type action there when they go to that dimension which is cool to see but yeah like i said it's it's a little clunky i definitely prefer uh bendis's writing way more throughout this book you get some uh spider ham action popping up in here which is you know at least kind of cool to see him you get a bunch of other different uh spider men from the multiverse there as well which is cool but uh you know all around i thought this was a real good read it was a fast read i think i read it in about three days this is a part here in the book where you know miles's mom finds uh like a ingredients for him to make his web fluid and it kind of finally comes out that you know she she knows that he's uh spider-man and they come forward and they let her know um another scene here where miles kind of goes into a bar and he just beats the dog shit out of everybody in there and he kind of is battling with himself like man do i have like evil in me am i gonna like do like bad stuff like this like he, he just felt bad going in there and fucking everybody up but uh he also gets into this crazy battle with hammerhead and he gets his ribs all jacked up and uh, luckily your boy gold balls is there to just shoot them gold balls all throughout the club <laughs> oh man you know and here miles is kind of battling with himself if he wants to actually be spider-man or not so he ends up actually just like bouncing and going to japan but of course i mean bad guys always follow so he ends up getting into a brawl with gang members that are trying to rob some old lady or something on the street which leads him to uh meeting up with these uh these like triad people where he ends up uh you know getting into uh sick fights with ninjas and shit because you know of course when you go to japan you're gonna fight some ninjas oh as a huge x-men fan this was like an oh what the fuck moment when uh cable just rolls up and it's just like yo next time you speak to miles morales tell him cable wants to speak face to face i was like yo what is good with that man your boy armadillo here spider-man just making fun of his name terribly miles ends up you know kind of falling for this girl at school who's been there all along but he only noticed her because she has this pink hat on barbara and that's where this whole like arc comes in here with taskmaster and this uh, other miles morales from a different dimension which is uh, pretty cool because you get some kingpin action. You get some real like gritty stuff in here, which uh, you wouldn't expect before. You get some straight up like prison, uh, you know, people getting shanked and all this, which is pretty cool. Kingpin just fucking this dude up, which is, uh, you know, it was actually surprising to see in this. But uh, it turns out like there's this Miles Morales who's in love with the Barbara in another dimension and she ends up dying. So uh kingpin lets this dude know that you can go to other dimensions and you might find your barbara somewhere else that kind of like sets up the whole like story arc with this like, little section here but this this has some great artwork throughout it and uh some real cool stuff with taskmaster man then you get this uh generations issue here which is pretty cool just because it goes back to like just the the old school peter parker ways and the artwork is pretty cool throughout it because it's like a throwback to the old school artwork um then leading on to like the final arc of the story you get the uh the sinister six is back together you get some iron spider action the spots 
uh, hobgoblin. This is a cool little thing. They're going to pull a heist. Uh, I won't spoil who uh, Iron Spider is. Red Hulk is the security guard at the uh, Avengers place where the, it's a hella transport or something like that that they're trying to steal. Um, so this is basically the, the end of the book right here. Some sick battles with Iron Spider and everybody else. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a badass little ending to the story, man. You get a throwback with the new Sinister Six, you know, trying to pull a heist, which is uh, pretty cool. Love that cover there with Sandman. Sandman looks great throughout this. Uh, like I said, this stuff, the artwork is great. You know, Hulk starts attacking Miles as he's trying to save the day because he had heard that there was a spider involved with the Sinister Six, but it's definitely Iron Spider and not him. Then you find out that the uh, Sinister Six was planning to sell that helicraft or whatever the hell it is to uh, Lucia von Bardas in uh, Latveria. So she's like trying to take over her country again or whatever. And then, you know, crazy battles ensue. And that's, I won't spoil everything for you, but uh, that's the end of the story, man. Brian Michael Bendis gives his little love letter to writing Spider-Man for all these years. You get all these great variant covers collected in the back of the book. You get the hip-hop variants. Uh, some stuff with Gwen, uh, Joe Jusco Gwen, which is pretty great. Uh, always good to see uh, all these variant covers, Gabriel Delato. Let me know what you think about this book down in the comments. Are you going to get the reprint later in the year? And as always, thank you for watching. Once we hit 500 subscribers, we're going to be giving away this 110th scale Colossus statue from Iron Studios. I'll use a random comment generator and pick the winner. All you got to do to win is be subscribed to the channel, like and comment on a video where I mention this giveaway, and you must be located in the United States. Good luck and thanks for watching.